So over the years, I have owned three different dog training businesses in three different cities. They were all successful by my standards, uh, as well as owning dogproblems.com, which was one of the first category killers in the dog training space online. Uh, that business uh, ended up uh, making us over $6 million. And we, we built up a newsletter that had over 70,000 subscribers. And we've learned a lot. I took that knowledge that I had from running my three dog training businesses and dogproblems.com. And we opened up a Google AdWords uh, online advertising agency to help other businesses and, and specifically dog trainers grow their business. And so this video series is going, going to really dig deep into everything you need to know to grow your dog training business from a sales and marketing perspective. And it's also going to reveal what I've learned looking at over 30, close to 35 now dog training businesses that we manage the Google AdWords campaigns for across America. And what we've seen, if you look at the guys who are making over a million dollars a year from their individual location um, uh, in their individual city, they're all doing kind of a variation on the same thing. The way that they've structured their business is very interesting. And I'm going to share that structure with you in this video. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to dig deep into all the little nuts and bolts of how to successfully use killer tested marketing strategies and sales tactics that are easy, that don't require high pressure. So I'm not talking about used car salesman kind of stuff, but, but how to sell your dog training services to make maximum money so that you can help more dog owners and also take care of your family and go on vacation and live the life that you've always dreamed about living. So stick with me. I'm Adam Katz, and we're going to go over in this video exactly what you need to know to structure your business to make sales easy. <laughs> Let me just pretext things before we get into the meat, the meat and potatoes. I want to say that this is not the only way to do things, because if I tell you that this is the best way, this is the best way in my opinion. And in inevitably, there will be somebody who will spout off, raise their hand and say, well, I don't do that and I'm successful. Great. All power to you. You know, do whatever you want. You have to, you're a living, breathing, thinking individual. You have to make decisions for yourself. What I'm doing in this video series is I want to share with you my experience and my interpretation, what I'm seeing is happening within the industry because of the perspective that I have working with so many different successful dog training business owners. So you don't have to do everything my way. You don't have to listen to anything for that matter. Um, this is just more information for you to take in and process. But I do guarantee that if you stick fairly close to the formula I'm going to reveal, you will be successful. Most successful dog training business owners understand two main concepts and they've structured their business to be in accordance or to work in conjunction with these two main concepts. The first main concept is the recognition that it's always easier to sell somebody over the phone than it is in print. Okay. Print, you can extrapolate that to uh, websites. Okay. So if, if you talk, if I, if, I can talk to somebody on the phone. I could do a much better job of selling them than I can just sending them to my website. The corollary to that is I can do an even better job of selling them in person, face to face than I can over the phone. So that's the first main concept. I'm going to explain how that relates to the second main concept. The second main concept is that most successful dog trading business owners structure their sales process to walk them, walk the prospective customer, the, the dog owner, the prospective client through a sales process. And each step in that process, there's maybe three or four steps. Each step in that process is designed to do its own thing. It doesn't overstep the boundary of the next step in the process. I'm going to go over that process with you in this video. But let's return to the first concept that is easier to sell somebody in person than it is over the phone. And it's easier to sell somebody over the phone than it is uh, in print or on your website. So what does that mean? What does that tell us? That tells us that if, if you're designing your website, if you're writing the copy, copy is like the persuasive text on your, your website, on your business card, on your brochure, on anything else that you use, flyers, whatever it is, the whole goal of that, um, of that, that um, 
you know, website or that, that uh, ad copy is to get them on the phone. But once you have them on the phone, your goal should not be to sell them on your dog training. And, and this is a very, very important distinction that blends over into the second concept about having separate, um, separate elements of your sales funnel of your sales process. Um, what that means is that you're using all of your printed media to get them to reach out to you and talk to you on the phone because it's easier to sell them on the phone than it is to sell them in print. Okay. But here's the big, but it's much easier to sell them in person than it is to sell them on the phone. So here's what you're going to do. And here's what most successful dog training business owners do. They use that printed media to get the dog owner to pick up the phone and call them. Once the prospective client calls you, you're going to use that phone call not to sell your dog training, but to sell them on the importance of an in-person consultation or demonstration. And the way that you're going to do this is you're going to offer a free consultation and temperament test, and maybe something else that you, you can be creative and, and offer them in order to make it worthwhile for them to meet you in person. So our goal is to get them on the phone, but our goal on the phone is not to sell them on your packages or your programs or how great your dog training is. That's going to be done in the in-person consultation. Your only objective is to get them on the phone with your print media. And once they're on the phone to get them to commit to an in-person consultation or demonstration, because that's where you're going to sell them. And that's where you're going to get the money. And I'm going to do separate videos on how to do individual aspects of that, how to run your, your, your telephone consultation to sell that in-person consultation and what to do once you have them, once you're face to face with them, uh, what to do to sell them in person. It's going to be really valuable stuff. But for today's video, this is, these are the two concepts I want you to remember. Number one, it's always easier to sell people on the phone than it is in print. And it's easier to sell them in person than it is to sell them on the phone. Number one. And number two, each step in the process in the sales process should not overstep the next step. So I'm not selling the dog training in my print media in on my website. I'm not selling the packages or the benefits of the programs on my website. All I'm doing is I'm selling the importance of them calling me. And once I get them on the phone, I'm selling them on the importance of getting together so that I can give their dog a temperament test and give them a free consultation and really get inside the dog's head so that I can then put together a program that's going to best meet their needs. Now, that program that you put together may be the same program you sell to every client, or it may be a 100% customized program. It doesn't matter. The point I'm trying to get across is that when you sell them is when you're face-to-face, -face, not over the phone and not in your print or your website. So that's the main takeaway, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, most of these guys who are making over a million dollars with their individual dog training business in, in their, their hometown, um, what they're doing, they're not, they're not confusing or conflating that sales process, they're keeping everything independent. So again, final recap, you're going to use your print media, your website, your brochures, your business cards to encourage them to pick up the phone and call you. Okay. Once they're calling you, you're not going to sell them on your dog training program. You're going to sell them on the importance of getting together for a free consultation. Once they're at that free consultation, that's where you're going to sell them and get the money. This is a super, super important distinction that's going to help you make a lot more money and it's going to make it easy to close sales and sign more dog training clients. I'm Adam Katz. Stay tuned. Subscribe below. Subscribe. I think it's over here. Subscribe below so that you'll be notified the minute I come out with uh, further videos in this series to help you grow your dog training business and really get a, a, a good lock, a good feel for how you should be conducting your sales and your marketing process. Take care.